Hey y'all, welcome back to the World History Project. I'm Wood Boyles, and today's color is beige. Today we're asking, why did the world descend into a conflict we call World War I? A little over a century ago, a war began that would kill between 15 to 19 million people. The casualty rates were higher than any other war in history. It was also different in that it was a global war. Sure, the main battle lines were in Europe, and you can read all about those and watch tons of movies about trench warfare and all that stuff. But the war also impacted Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The entry of the Ottoman Empire into the conflict meant that battles were fought in Mesopotamia, Turkey, and the Arabian Peninsula. In Asia and in the Pacific, Japanese, Chinese, and British forces seized the German colonies. And in Africa, French, Belgian, and British Empire troops fought German colonial soldiers right up until the end of the war in 1918. Many of the soldiers fighting in Europe were colonial troops. They came from India and China, and others came from European colonies in Africa. So the war was global, but it was also a total war. By that we mean that the big states fighting each other gradually mobilized their whole economies for this conflict. Let me throw some statistics out there. By 1918, 51% of Germany's production was war material, and that number was as high as 78% in France. The number of people actually recruited as soldiers was enormous too. 9% of all British citizens were in the military by the end of the war, and 14% of the German population was in the military. But why did this war happen in the first place? This is one of the biggest questions historians face. There are a wide variety of explanations, which we're going to fit into three categories. The first category looks at something historians call proximal causes. That means the events immediately leading up to the war. Mostly, these explanations look at the shooting of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by Serbian nationalists on June 28, 1914. This assassination led Austria-Hungary to declare war on Serbia, which led Russia to come to Serbia's defense, which called Germany to help their Austria-Hungarian ally, and so on. The second category looks at deeper trends, the alliances, industrialization, and nationalist ideals that have been growing in Europe, in particular for decades. Many historians who look at these trends think war was inevitable. If the assassination of Franz Ferdinand hasn't caused it, something else would have. But the third explanation thinks this war happened by accident. Nobody really wanted it, but every time it could have been avoided by diplomacy or some other effort, people just failed to stop it. They made mistakes or missed meetings or misjudged each other. Is it really possible that 15 to 19 million people died because of a few mistakes? First, let's take a look at our word of the day, mobilize. Mobilize in war means to assemble and prepare troops for active military duty or service to a country. Each of the countries involved in the war had to mobilize their troops to fight. This was true, of course, in earlier wars, but it was particularly important for World War I. You see, industrialization meant that there was a timetable to war. Any country that could call up their troops and move them on railways to the border before the enemy had a big advantage. This meant that once your enemy started mobilizing, you had to mobilize too, and even faster than they did. Today, I want you to read what caused the First World War in Lesson 7.1 on Khan Academy. As you read, think about the different causes of World War I. Which one do you think was the most significant cause of the war? After you've read, write about this in your storage journal. Do you think there will ever be another World War? Considering that we just looked at the various causes of World War I, what might cause the globe to engage in another one? Tensions are rising between countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia over natural resources like oil and petroleum. The United States and China have been in a trade war for quite a while, and countries like North Korea continue to develop nuclear technology despite worldwide opposition. Could any of these lead to another global conflict? Can you think of any others? I'll see you next time.